me ask you a question. When did you last use your Spengler? Now, I'm pretty certain most of you have a Spengler. Some of you might have touched yours quite recently. I can imagine asking that question makes people feel rather concerned. What is a Spengler? Well, let me make it easier for you. If I changed the question and asked you, when did you last use your vacuum cleaner? It's easy. So here's a useless fact. Mr. J. Murray Spengler invented and patented the electric vacuum suction sweeper. But of course, nobody has ever heard of him. Now, let me ask you another question. Think of what comes into your head when I say the word sewing machine. I think you'll probably come up with something that looks a little like this. The very famous Singer sewing machine developed in the middle of the 19th century and one which dominated the world in terms of this technology. But in fact, it wasn't Mr. Singer who invented the sewing machine. It was actually this gentleman, Elias Howe. There you are, his US patent. And basically, this was the world's first patented sewing machine. What happened here, unfortunately, was despite having the idea, despite patenting it, he wasn't able to make a commercial success of the innovation, which is something Mr. Singer was rather good at. Now, these are two examples of something rather important. Invention isn't like this. Bing! That light bulb flashes on. That's lots of ideas. But that's not innovation. Innovation is a journey. It's like this. It's moving those ideas along a journey to create value. Now, if we think about invention, there are lots of examples of inventions which their authors at least thought were good enough to register a patent for. So all of these examples you can find in the US Patent Office. Not too many of them in the streets outside. For example, the gentleman who thought the world needed the gas-filled umbrella. This rather lethal gadget, the musical flamethrower. Little gadget here where if you happen to enjoy duck hunting, you can go duck hunting and still stay dry. This is a rather nice idea. Have a, a Walkman strapped to your tummy for nine months of entertainment for your fetus. But perhaps the star prize should go to the gentleman who thought the world needed the cheese flavoured cigarette. Now, these are all silly examples, but they make an important point. Innovation is not just those initial ideas, even if you take them as far as the patent office. And why is that important for our course? Well, very simply, it's about how we understand innovation. What goes on in our heads when we think about something, that's basically going to shape what we do about it, the actions we take, what we pay attention to, what we give our resources to, what we manage. And so for any organisation, any individual concerned with the question of innovation, a really important place to start is that mental model. How do we think innovation happens? Well, as we said, innovation is a journey. It's a journey moving from an idea to creating and capturing the value from that idea. Now, it looks simple, but of course the reality is it's not a straight line. It's not a simple journey. It's twisting and turning in all sorts of ways. And for different organisations and different people, the journey has a number of different wrinkles. But underneath it, there are some clear, repeatable stages to the journey. First of all, it's all about searching. We know, and we'll find out more, but we know innovation comes from all sorts of different directions. So our first job is to search for the possibilities, to search for the opportunities, to tune in to the threats that we have to react to. Essentially, the first phase is always around searching. But we can't do everything. So we've got to choose from all those things we could do, the ones we're going to do, and it's probably worthwhile making sure we do that on a reasonably strategic basis. Not simply saying, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. That's probably not a clever strategy. Instead, is this something that we think we can do? Do we know something about it? Can we make and create value? We then got to, of course, get on and do it. And this idea of implementation turns that bright idea 
through various iterations to something which people can look at, play with, and eventually create value for them. We've got to make sure we capture the value. We've got to make sure, not that we can just succeed technically, just to create the thing, but also to make it happen on a large scale. So we've got to spread our innovation in order to capture the value. At a really important stage, we need to learn. When we finish that process, even if we fail, there are opportunities to learn so that we can do it better the next time. So in outline, that's the journey that we're interested in. That's the roadmap, and what we're going to do in this and subsequent stages is look in more detail at these phases of the innovation process. Importantly, not just what they are, but what we can do to work with them, how we could organise and manage them. So, let's just summarise. Innovation isn't bing, just a flash of inspiration or a good idea. There's more to it than that. It's a journey. It's a journey from idea to creating and capturing value. There are many variations on this theme, and we'll look at some of them, but the journey involves the same core stages. There's a stage around search, around select, around implement, around capturing value, and very importantly, learning so that we might do this better next time.